From the moment her body was discovered, there's been a tragic progression of shock, sadness, and now troubling questions about how Yardley Love came to die. Were there warning signs that her former boyfriend, now accused of her murder, was capable of such rage? And what did the University of Virginia know of his prior offences? Meanwhile, the suspect's mother issued a statement today expressing her love for the victim, but also her own son, as Ashley Banfield now reports. With her older sister Lexi by her side, these were happier days for Yardley Love, a beautiful young lacrosse player full of hope and promise. It's very sad, very sad. And imagine she was, you know, a few weeks away from graduation. I, I can't even imagine what that must be like for her family. Yardley has been put to rest, but the events surrounding the 22-year-old's death continue to haunt those closest to her. Is there anything Did you, you can tell her? Us this time? In an emotional statement today from Marta Murphy, the mother of George Hughley, the man accused of killing Yardley, she reached out to the Love family, saying, I am devastated and confused. Yardley was part of our lives. She was a sweet, wonderful young woman with a limitless future. No parent should have to bury a child, and not a moment goes by when they are not in our thoughts and our prayers. I want to express how deeply saddened we are by Yardley's loss. Also, as a mother, I hope that people can understand that both George's father and I love our son. On the wings of the night. Yardley's death has sent shockwaves through the university and throughout the state of Virginia. The governor just today meeting with the university president to discuss this murder and how to prevent another tragedy. Our job as, uh, as Virginians and as leaders is to look at uh, any tragedy, as we did with Virginia Tech, as we do with uh, things that happen throughout this commonwealth, to try to find out in the wake of a tragedy, how can we do things different? How can we do things better? A question many in the community are asking. I just really want the message to go to women, especially in college, that you need to look for signs. On the surface, few would believe there were signs. George Hughley was an All-American in high school and an MVP before attending UVA. It was more important that we won as a team today. We've tried really hard to win. During his four years at the university, he was vice president of Operation Smile and was popular among friends and teammates. But under that veneer, trouble was brewing. And although the university says it knew nothing of his brushes with the law, a rap sheet was growing. In 2007, an arrest for underage possession of alcohol and a citation for reckless driving. In 2008, police reported an altercation while on his family's yacht in Palm Beach. According to his father, there was yelling and screaming and that Hughley jumped overboard and was rescued by passing boaters. And in 2009, a conviction for public intoxication and resisting arrest, a crime in which he scuffled with a female officer, allegedly threatening her life. She ultimately used her taser to subdue him. We did end up on the ground at one point. Kept telling him to stop resisting, that you know he needed to comply with my orders, that he was only making the situation worse. And there have been other reported instances of violence. He allegedly attacked a lacrosse teammate last year after hearing that the man kissed Yardley. And students say within weeks of her death, Yardley had to be rescued from an attack by George. But despite all of this, no one stepped forward to alert authorities or the school, including Yardley herself. There certainly is an atmosphere, particularly in athletics, where boys will be boys. And they are tolerated to be driven by this whole thing of sexual conquest and sexual control. That really needs to change. They should be more cautious of allowing people with violent crimes onto campuses. It's something the school and the governor are now addressing head on working towards legislation that would notify schools if their students are arrested. The president spoke directly to Hughley's dark past. Information of that kind would have lit our system up, uh, simply because students who, who do those things and we know about it find themselves under interim suspension immediately. But even with the legislation being discussed to warn schools when their students are involved with police, many say there's only so much you can do. You know, that boys will be boys mentality has been tolerated in our society for a long time. And I'm afraid to say I don't think it's over. There's no silver bullet that could have kept 
uh, Yardley alive, but if she would have felt that she could have reached out to somebody else, the dean of students, somebody in the campus, who then reports it to the coach, and they make George aware that, look, you can't treat people this way, you can't control people this way, it's unacceptable behavior. That at least calls him on it. Meanwhile, lacrosse players have returned to the practice field at UVA. This is championship season, and the men's team is ranked number one. The women's team is number six. Both teams are gearing up to play in Yardley's honor. I think everyone just is, is a big family here, and I think everyone's going to go out and support them and um, show them that they care and understand what they're going through and just help them through this time. As Yardley's family and the students struggle to understand and move on with their lives, a scholarship has been set up in her name, and the school has announced it will award her a degree posthumously. She will graduate with her friends, only she won't be there. Just a memory frozen in time of a dazzling young woman who left her mark on a campus left in grief. For Nightline, I'm Ashley Banfield.